the next 10 minutes we're going to talk about the Bohr effect. Some of the more challenging points is that pH, which is a reflection of hydrogen ion concentration, will change the affinity of oxygen to hemoglobin depending on the pH. And so what the Bohr effect serves to illustrate, how does that affect protein structure and its function? Uh, in the lungs, we have oxygen that binds to hemoglobin, and we form oxyhemoglobin. And this typically occurs at a low hydrogen ion concentration. Okay, uh, which is equivalent to a high pH. So, high pH, high affinity. And in the tissue, there is an opposite effect occur where oxygen needs to be released, releasing its oxygen. This will typically occur at a fairly high hydrogen ion concentration, which is equal to a pH that's has a value that's low and it also what that does is it decreases the affinity of O2 okay and that's what you want to see a decrease in affinity uh, of O2 for hemoglobin in the tissues now why does pH affect hemoglobin in this way well, what is a product of metabolism in tissue? Well, it happens to be CO2. And CO2 has to be removed from the tissue and usually occurs by diffusion. Now, that removal is facilitated by uh, an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. Okay, that enzyme uh, plus water will uh, yield a very important buffer called carbonic acid. Carbonic acid with uh, carbonic anhydrase and CO2 produces a proton. So in producing that proton, that proton will bind to hemoglobin and become protonated. What happens when you protonate it? Well, there are a number of functional groups. There's the amine, or the alpha amine of the terminal end, the end terminus of our beta of hemoglobin. There are also carboxyl termini. another secondary structural element in hemoglobin. There are also other residues like um, histidine. So we have these um, places where protons can be donated or accepted. And when we get hydrogen increasing in its concentration in the microenvironment of hemoglobin, those protons will, will protonate these functional groups. Okay, and we have also uh, amino acids that are particularly important. Lysine. Okay, lysine has an amine at its terminal end. Arginine. Arginine also has an amine to that can be protonated or deprotonated. Functional groups with PKs that are um, tend to be greater than 9. However, we have a carboxyl end. But these all contribute to the structure of the protein and in the microenvironment of the hemoglobin gradient or pH change 
will affect the structure. And therefore, when the hemoglobin is protonated, it loses that those charge-charge uh, interactions, and so it also loses then the ability to hold on to its oxygen. Because consequently, when CO2 travels through the circulation, it buffers the sur solution, buffers the pH of blood at pH 7.4, because there is an equilibrium between um, the production of bicarbonate and the production of CO2, which can then go off into the lungs. Um, this results in the absorption of the proton, okay, because we make CO2 and we make water. When you absorb that proton, then our hemoglobin, which was initially protonated, can now give up that proton, all right, and the ion pairs return and oxygen uh, has a greater affinity for a hemoglobin because the pH now uh, goes up, hydrogen ion concentration goes down because of the production of CO2, and so we get oxygen hemoglobin binding. So this cycle occurs with very little change, if any, in the pH of the uh, blood that it's in. One thing to note is that with lactic acid in the muscles, uh, lactic acid will produce a considerable amount of hydrogen ion, and as a result, it will increase hydrogen ion concentration, causing pH to decrease, causing the affinity of oxygen to decrease, and therefore you releasing more oxygen from hemoglobin in the muscles. And that's important because we need more oxygen. As a matter of fact, uh, under these conditions, we get about 10% more oxygen from hemoglobin. And also, the formation of carbamates Carbamates tend to bind deoxyhemoglobin much better, okay? And they come in the form of uh, these carboxyl groups at the end terminus, okay, neutralizing the charge on the end terminus. And this is how blood carries uh, CO2 away from the tissue because it will be carrying CO2 back to the heart and lungs. And so this binding lowers the uh, oxygen affinity because once these carbamates form uh, on hemoglobin, we tend to form more deoxyhemoglobin. Okay. So the oxygen is, goes to the tissue and the CO2 comes out of the tissue. And you should also remember the uh, reason for BPG's ability to increase uh, O2 delivery. And all of this, of course, describes how the Bohr effect can help oxygen be delivered to the tissue by hemoglobin. Okay, and that's it.